Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Today we're exploring Hollywood Forever Cemetery, where we'll find such stars as Judy Garland, Norma Talmadge, Clifton Webb, and many more. Join us, won't you? Hollywood Forever is the most notorious cemetery in Los Angeles, and certainly the most requested since we started doing these tours earlier this year. Unlike its forest lawn counterparts, Hollywood Forever not only recognizes its place in Hollywood, it embraces it, celebrates it. The Hollywood sign is visible from the entrance to the cemetery, and here the dead roll in style in a Rolls Royce hearse. It's the only cemetery with an official walking tour, given by Hollywood historian Kerry Bible. And how about movie night in a cemetery? The large mausoleum wall makes for a perfect movie screen. What could be more Hollywood than watching a movie surrounded by the graves of those who made the movie? On the Douglas Fairbanks lawn, no less. Hollywood Forever was founded in 1899 as Hollywood Cemetery. The cemetery grew up right alongside the nascent film industry. Not long after its formation, a large tract of the land in the southern portion of the cemetery was sold to Paramount, where the studio stands to this day. In 1939, the cemetery was bought by Jules Roth, a millionaire convicted felon, and so began the unsavory chapter of this storied cemetery. Roth siphoned money from the operations of the cemetery to enrich himself with luxuries, including a yacht, which he claimed was for scattering ashes of clients. He neglected upkeep, allowing the cemetery to fall into disrepair. He also closed the grounds to minorities, denying actress Hattie McDaniel her wish to be interred here. The 1994 Northridge earthquake inflicted more damage on the already crumbling cemetery, and soon it was making more money from disinterments than interments. To settle some of his tax bills, Roth sold the land along Santa Monica Boulevard to form a hideous strip mall, a blight on Hollywood Forever's front door. Roth died in 1998, leaving the cemetery in ruins. That same year, the cemetery was purchased by the Cassidy Brothers and renamed Hollywood Forever. They poured millions into restoring the cemetery, and so began its renaissance, becoming one of the most culturally and historically significant sites in Hollywood. But enough history. Let's get on with the tour. As with other large cemeteries, this is the first of a three-part series. We'll begin our tour at the chapel just west of the entrance. It's often locked, but if you're lucky, you might find this corridor into the chapel on the west side open. If not, ask nicely. They'll usually let you in if a service isn't being held. The rear portion of the chapel is a beautiful columbarium featuring an array of glass front niches. We'll head up to the second level where, along the far wall, we find the niche and urn of B.B. Daniels, a prolific actress in the first half of the 20th century. Her career began as a child during the silent era, and as a teen she became Harold Lloyd's leading lady, their relationship extending off the screen as well, one of Hollywood's first star couples. Her drive to pursue a film career rather than be a traditional wife eventually drove them apart. She soon landed at Paramount under Cecil B. DeMille, starring in films like Why Change Your Wife. With the advent of the talkies years later, Beebe was able to showcase her voice in films like 42nd Street. Every kiss, every hug seems to act just like a drug. You're getting to be a habit with me. Doesn't she sing gorgeous? 70,000 bucks. Your You're getting to be a habit with me. was something that I could take or leave alone. Resting alongside Beebe's urn is the urn of her husband, Ben Lyon. Ben was also an actor who, with Beebe, had a successful radio show in London called High Gang. Ben later became an executive at 20th Century Fox. He discovered an aspiring actress named Norma Jean Doherty and arranged for her screen test, stating she was Jean Harlow all over again. He got the young star a contract and helped her come up with her stage name, Marilyn Monroe. Low on the wall to the right is Jerry Siegel. He was a comic book writer who, along with Joe Shuster, created one of the most iconic superheroes of all time, Superman. 
In his original 1933 incarnation, the Superman was a bald, telepathic villain. In the years that followed, Siegel and Schuster continued to develop Superman and try to get him into syndicated comic strips. Superman's look was inspired by Douglas Fairbanks, and his mild-mannered alter ego, Clark Kent, was inspired by Harold Lloyd. Superman's home city, Metropolis, was taken from the 1927 Fritz Lang film of the same name. With the characters and story ready for prime time, The Man of Steel finally made his debut in June 1938, as the cover feature of Action Comics 1. It was an immediate hit. Resting here with Jerry is his wife, Joanne, the original inspiration and model for Lois Lane. Further along this wall is actress Anne Sheridan. She was known as the Oomph Girl, and can be seen in films like Angels with Dirty Faces, King's Row, and I Was a Male War Bride. She also made her mark on television in Pistols and Petticoats. After her death in 1967, her ashes were stored at the Chapel of Pines Crematory in Los Angeles, until they were moved here in 2005, in accordance with her wishes. Along the next wall right, we find actress and model Lana Clarkson. She had bit roles early in her career in films like Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Scarface, but is perhaps best remembered for her roles in sword and sorcery films like Barbarian Queen. Her work in B-movies brought her a cult following in the 80s and 90s. However, on February 3rd, 2003, Lana was found shot dead in the home of record producer Phil Spector. She was just 40. Spector claimed she accidentally shot herself kissing the gun, but a jury saw it differently. Phil Spector was convicted of Lana's murder in 2009. That'll do it for the chapel. Let's head back outside. To the west we find the Abbey of the Psalms. In the first corridor on the right, the Sanctuary of Memories, is the crypt of voice actress extraordinaire Lucille Bliss. Her voice can be heard in everything from Cinderella to The Secret of Nim. Two of her best known characters are featured right on her crypt, Crusader Rabbit and Smurfette. Let's head around the north to the first corridor on the left, the Sanctuary of Faith. Here we find the crypt of Joan Hackett, an actress popular in the 60s to the 80s. She was nominated for an Oscar for her role in Only When I Laugh, and can be seen in several westerns of the era, like Support Your Local Sheriff and Will Penny. And let's be honest, she's got the best epitaph in the whole cemetery, so let's do as she asks. The next corridor down is the Sanctuary of Trust. High on the right wall is one of the most prolific composers you've never heard of, Carl Stalling, the man who essentially invented the zany, frenetic patchwork music style associated with Warner Brothers cartoons. Stalling started his career improvising organ accompaniments for silent film in Kansas City. There he met a young, aspiring cartoonist named Walt Disney. They both eventually ended up in Hollywood, and Disney hired Stalling to score some of the earliest Disney shorts, including Plain Crazy and The Skeleton Dance. Stalling eventually made his way to Warner Brothers, where he would essentially score all the Looney Tunes and Merry Melody cartoons. He averaged one complete score a week for 22 years. An incredible pace to keep up, right Giuseppe? Right. And here's an interesting fact. Stalling voiced Mickey Mouse's very first spoken words, hot dogs. Hot dog! Hot dog! Further down this corridor, on the bottom row, is Charles Chaplin Jr. 
He was the son of Hollywood legend Charlie Chaplin. He made his film debut alongside his father in 1952 in Limelight. He only starred in a handful of other film and television programs in his career, including Girlstown, alongside another son of a silent film legend, Harold Lloyd Jr. Let's head inside the Abbey and left at the first corridor. High on the left wall is Mildred Harris. On the subject of Charlie Chaplin, Mildred was Chaplin's first wife. She was only 17 at the time. She began her acting career as a child during the silent era, appearing in such films as D.W. Griffith's Intolerance, and can be seen in Frank Capra's The Power of the Press. She didn't transition well into the talkies, and her career slowly declined. She died of pneumonia at just 42. Further down on the right is the crypt of Victor Fleming. He has the distinction of having directed two of Hollywood's most legendary films, both of which were released in 1939, The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind, which won him an Oscar. He directed many other classics like Red Dust and Captain's Courageous. Oh, by the way, if you're a fan of Modern Family, you remember the episode where Jay tries to convince Gloria to buy a crypt, or a drawer as she calls it. That scene was shot right here in this corridor. Heading back outside to the Sanctuary of Peace, we find the Talmadge Room on the left, which houses the crypts of the three Talmadge sisters. Norma Talmadge, the eldest of the Talmadge sisters, was one of the major box office draws of the silent era and one of the most glamorous stars of the 20s. Some of her popular films include Secrets and Smilin' Through, both of which were produced under her own production company. Her career began to wane at the dawn of the talkies, but her place in Hollywood was already cemented, literally. She was the first to have her footprints immortalized in cement at Grauman's Chinese Theater in 1927. Common practice among actresses of the era was to fib about their age to make them younger, a fib the Talmadge sisters would take to the grave. Norma was actually born in 1894. Above Norma is younger sister Natalie Talmadge, who had a minor acting career. She appeared with Norma in the 1920 film Yes or No, and her final film appearance was alongside her husband Buster Keaton in Our Hospitality. Talmadge divorced Keaton in 1932, taking his entire fortune and refusing him any contact with their children, which devastated Keaton. She never remarried, and having retired acting in 1923, lived the rest of her days in relative solitude. She was born in 1896. Above Natalie is the youngest sister, Constance Talmadge. Constance was the comedienne of the trio. Her breakout role was in D.W. Griffith's Intolerance, and is best remembered today for flapper-era comedies like A Pair of Silk Stockings and Her Sister from Paris. Like her sisters, Constance's film career didn't extend into the talkies. She was actually born in 1898. Back down the Sanctuary of Peace, on the left is the crypt of Clifton Webb, one of the great actors of the 40s and 50s. But his career began long before that on stage in Broadway, where he appeared in a number of Broadway shows, most of which were musicals that showcased his tenor voice. He was middle-aged before he made a splash in Hollywood, landing the role of Waldo Lidecker in Otto Preminger's noir classic, Laura. What's the harm in trying? There was always a chance that you might, Mr. Lidecker. Just think what it would mean to- You seem to be completely disregarding something more important than your career. What? My lunch. Do you really believe that? Please play. I never heard of anything so selfish. In my case, self-absorption is completely justified. I have never discovered any other subject quite so worthy of my attention. No one did the prim and proper yet lovably prickly gentleman better than Clifton Webb. He was the first actor to play housekeeper Lynn Belvedere, beginning in 1948's Sitting Pretty. He was often known as one of Hollywood's best dressed men, and he was nominated for three Oscars in his career. The next corridor over is the Sanctuary of Light. 
Just to the right is Jesse Ulasky. He was a pioneer in early Hollywood, co-founding Paramount Pictures, and producing the very first feature film in Hollywood, The Squaw Man. He hired up-and-coming director Cecil B. DeMille to direct it. On the opposite wall, way up at the top, is Darla Hood. She was the little leading lady, so to speak, of the popular R Gang, also known as Little Rascals, short films of the 30s and 40s. She was the object of young Alfalfa's undying affections. Would you like to eat lunch with me? Mm-hmm. I made it especially for you. And you know why? Why? Because you have personality. After she outgrew our gang, she made appearances in various TV shows and films, including The Bat with Vincent Price. In 1979, she underwent an appendectomy. She died suddenly of heart failure after the procedure. It was discovered that she had contracted acute hepatitis from a blood transfusion during the procedure, leading to her death. She was only 47. Heading back outside, further down this road, is the newly minted Judy Garland Pavilion. The new eternal resting place of Hollywood legend, Judy Garland. Born Frances Ethel Gum, she began her career in vaudeville, performing with her sisters as the Gum Sisters. By the time she was 13, she had a contract with MGM and began making movies, mainly musicals to showcase her incredible voice. She found a popular pairing with Mickey Rooney in films like Babes in Arms. A few years later she landed the role that would make her a legend, playing Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Over the Rainbow is considered by many as the greatest film song of all time, and became her signature song. Other of her notable film roles include Meet Me in St. Louis and A Star is Born, which earned her an Oscar nomination. She delighted audiences on stage as well as on screen, receiving a special Tony Award in 1952 for her Palace Theatre engagement. She was truly one of Hollywood's brightest stars, who burned out far too quickly. While in London in 1969, she was found dead of an accidental overdose of Secanol at the age of 47. She was originally entombed at Ferncliff Cemetery in New York, but in early 2017, nearly 50 years later, her family had her body relocated here to Hollywood Forever, her crypt adorned with her favorite flower, yellow roses. Her epitaph reads, I'll come to you smiling through the years, lyrics from one of her popular songs, Through the Years. I'll come to you Smiling through the Our last stop is further down this road, in the Jewish section of the cemetery, in the Hall of David. Here we find composer Nelson Riddle. We visited him in our Batman special, but he was much more than just the composer for the legendary Batman TV series and movie in the 60s. He began his career at Capitol Records, arranging and orchestrating for artists like Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland, and more. He went on to have a successful career in film and TV music, winning an Oscar for his music in The Great Gatsby. Several popular TV series also feature themes written by Riddle, including Route 66 and The Untouchables.
And that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Drive carefully as you tour the cemetery for our animal friends who may be crossing the road. Most notably here, peacocks. I can think of no more perfect mascot for Hollywood Forever than the peacock. Except maybe a peacock with a hipster mustache. Oh, well aren't we looking dapper today? Watch out peahens!